You're listening to The Other 50%, A History of Hollywood. I'm Julie Harris-Walker. This is the podcast where I talk to successful women in entertainment and hear their stories. Our presenting sponsor is the end-to-end production solution, Greenslate. Whether it's start work, time cards, purchase orders, or reports, everything is digital, everything is on the app, you can work from wherever you are. The future is actually here. And if you'd like to hear this pitch in person or see it for yourself, call me. I'm working there. Here's my number, 310-789-2001, extension 323, or email me, jhw at gslate.com. For today's episode, there was a very happy miscommunication. I was meant to interview Elizabeth Blake Thomas, a director, via the internet, as I assumed she was in England. Well, she also assumed I was in England, and once we were on the phone, we realized we were actually down the street from each other. So I jumped in my car and ran down to the Hollywood Film Festival, where I got to interview both Elizabeth and her daughter, Isabella Blake Thomas, a very lucky twofer. Together, Elizabeth and Isabella have the production company called Mother and Daughter Entertainment, whose film Unseen I caught while I was at the festival. It was an unnerving film about child trafficking, and we were all very upset when we walked outside. So we walked out of the screening, we got into an outdoor bungalow, and we had the interview. So forgive the background noise, but try to soak up the ambiance. We were at Raleigh Studios at the Hollywood Film Festival. You can find us at theother50percent.com for added features, photos, show notes, and the merchandise. Go buy a coffee cup already. You can also listen on Apple Podcasts and all the podcast places. Also, the full season of Catch a Break, The Insider's Guide to Getting into and Navigating Hollywood is available on Apple Podcasts and all the podcast places and on the website catchabreakpodcast.com. Go check that one out too. We are working on season two right now. Okay, here's my conversation with Elizabeth Blake Thomas and Isabella Blake Thomas. Have a listen. Normally I just start with what do you do, but I think I'm gonna say that we're sitting here at the Hollywood Film Festival because yeah. we had a communication snafu and we, we, we both thought each other was in England. But what yeah. a great snafu to have. <laughs> exactly. I know. Most so, convenient one. Yes. It turned out, no, it, it could have been worse. That, no, no, I'm in London, but no, no, we're actually closer than we thought. We're actually down the street. Exactly. So why don't we do this in person? And, and I do feel slightly privileged because I, we are sitting here in a beautiful cabana. We are. <laughs> with, with the sun behind us. Uh, studio lot. Uh, the studio with lot. With a bucket of red vines. Exactly. Yes, it is, it is possibly, couldn't be more Hollywood. <laughs> That's perfect. So I just saw your short film, Unseen, which I have to tell you I'm very upset by. So I think you did your job. Thank you. No, and that is exactly the reaction I would like, which I know is ironic. When someone watches yeah. a film, someone the other day, I said, well, what did you think? And he said, God, I feel awful. I was like, great. That's Perfect. exactly what I need yeah. you to feel. That's exactly what God yeah. intended. Yeah, yeah. Um, So tell us about that film. Well, it was inspired by a true story of someone I'd met at Sundance. And I don't like that either. No, I know. I mean, and a true story where actually she was taken for five years and found... So there was a happy ending in that sense, but I didn't want to tell a story like everybody else did, which is a, uh, a dictating something that could be graphic, something horrific to watch. I kind of felt like it was the lead up to it that was the most interesting. Yeah. And so that's why it worked as a short. And having a 17 year old, it was exceptionally relevant. I also have a 17 year old daughter oh, and a. Uh, 14-year-old daughter and a 12-year-old son. Yeah, it was very upsetting. We haven't said this film is about child trafficking. It is. Yeah. It's the, well, it's the role that the social media plays in the facilitation of human exploitation and child trafficking. Let's talk about that because you handled it in such an interesting way because in the background of the scenes on mirrors, the social media was scrolling. That's right. Yeah, I didn't want to convey social media in the usual way with phones and over-the-shoulder shots. So I believed a mirror was a, a really good example of something that is looking into our soul and something the young teens use every day. And so I just had constant scrolling social media. So for example, even when the young teen wasn't in the room and the mum might've been there, the social media kept on playing. Because it's constant. Constant. It is, yeah. And all the pictures were so provocative even in yeah. the social media that was going by. Yeah. Well, you actually, you helped me create well, that. That, was, that was one of my, my jobs was to find accounts like that and create those those videos and clips that you saw on the thing because all the footage on there was actually real actual it's social media actual footage. social media i just had to find them and do my screen recording so i could could use that for the vfx so this is isabella speaking right now i should say the two of you have a company called mother and daughter entertainment we do, we do. Indeed. <laughs> yes that's pretty so. great mm-hmm. it, it is, is fun so i know that uh 
that you, Elizabeth, are a director, writer, producer, sometimes actor. Well, no, not an actor at all. That is purely when my friends say, I need something. I'm like, yeah, okay, can't find anybody else, I'll do it. But I'm definitely a behind the camera person, although I might sound like I quite enjoy it. I have the face for radio. Um, I always but, say that. <laughs> but I, uh, but I, director is what I say I am. That's the, mm -hmm. the top thing. You have to create your own work. So generally you're writing it and producing it. Sure. But I have a lot of support from everybody. But that's why we created our production company so that Isabella could also produce and write. I mean, we've written our next features together, haven't we? Yeah, yeah we're so, a really good team in that sense, that we're very good at putting the ideas out there. And I was saying in an interview I did uh, not too long ago that we know what the other's thinking before we say it. And so to be able to work in that environment where it's not about pride, it's just making about the best content possible, that's pretty incredible. Yeah. That makes you great collaborators. Yeah. If you're already thinking, what the other yeah. person is thinking. Yep. <laughs> so Isabel, we also heard you singing on that film. Tell me about that. Yeah, well, I'm a singer-songwriter. I have two EPs and a single out at the moment, all on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, anywhere you can find music. Music is very much a passion of mine. It's a great way to share everything. Uh, specifically in Unseen, the music was very poignant, I think, when it comes to the emotional, because it wasn't just talking about, it wasn't lyrics, it was talking about sex trafficking it was very much about the feelings that go through certain things so fear and loss and anger and all of those things and so that's what my music was about for Unseen. Well and also because it was about a girl I really wanted I, I, I listened to so much music and it took away from the story so I love the simplicity mm -hmm. of a, a single girl's voice. And it's just a guitar and me. There's, yeah, there's no it was it was beautiful. So was that not your first choice? Were you thinking you had to go well, find other music? I, I, in a way, I was looking at everything I was. I was like, well, maybe I'd need this here, or let's get this composed. And then I, I'm lucky I get to hear this voice yeah. most nights. <laughs> and um, and so I, I just said, this is just perfect. Just just write me a song for it. Let's hear your voice on and it. And that goes back to the to the pride thing. I want to make sure she's finding the best stuff she can for her her movies and so it's all about me saying hey use my stuff use my stuff so if that happens to be the best thing for it I'm thrilled it's wonderful I want to hear uh, your journey becoming a filmmaker oh well really it's actually only because of Isabella so I was a theatre director in London Isabella was born and started her first job when she was five so I then had to become the mother on set mm. And, and I didn't mind, you know, that's that's what I did. I kept on my theatre company as much as I could and she would come to my classes. But then she got uh, called out to here, to LA, and an agent and, and, you know, you need to come out here. So again, I started to be with her on set out here and I got asked to help direct some other cast members. Mm. And then bit by bit, I was just kind of assimilating it. Is that the word? You know, or, or, os, what's that, osmosis? What's the thing when you're... Well, you just take it in? Yeah, you're osmosis. literally... It is osmosis, yeah. isn't it? Oh, Mrs. Sutton from biology, that worked. <laughs> that was like 30 years ago. Um, and, um, and so I was just absorbing it without knowing I was absorbing everything to do with being on a set. Yeah. And then I had the uh, wonderful opportunity of someone saying, you know, you should make something for Isabella. And I was like, well, I don't know how to do that. And uh, my best friend said, well, you should be a director. And I said, how do I become a director? And he said, you just say you are. Yeah, So I did. that's the secret. Oh yeah. So I did, so I then found somebody that believed in me, funded my first film, and I went with momentum. Wow. Yeah, and that momentum was one and a half million dollars over three years, and I shot seven features. What? Yeah, I am tired. Wait. <laughs> I am tired. Hold on. Yeah. Someone gave you a hundred, at one point so, a million so to shoot with? So there were a few people yeah. that I managed to get together. So over those three years, actually probably over a year and a half, I raised one and a half million from various sources and I was able to shoot feature after feature after feature. Seven after feature. of them? Yes. Okay, so now do you feel like you're a director? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I will say it's the, this last film, which I, is my smallest project, yet I feel like it's my largest. This because, Unseen? This Unseen. Because I am able to just give it to everybody. I've never experienced that as a filmmaker yeah. because I self-funded this. So I can go, I've got a film, do you want it? And I can give, give it, it to away. everybody. I want everybody to watch it. Where should everyone find it? Well, it's going to be available on uh, VOD, YouTube, our website, Amazon. That's just to start with. Mm -hmm. But obviously YouTube being it worldwide, everybody can yeah. get it. And, and um, I'll link to from, it as well. Yeah, and that's from next Friday, the 11th of October. Okay.
I'm not sure when I this realized, is coming out. Just realized. Perhaps three weeks. <laughs> um, okay, so Isabella, tell us about your career. Yes, well, I've been an actress since the age of four or five. It's kind of when it started. And I was the lead in a TV show in the UK. Everything kind of just dominoed from there because I was like, you know, this is really fun. You get to be paid to kind of be different people and try new things. Wait, I this was this. your first job? First job. Yeah. Just, That's how it works. Yep, first, first <laughs> job. It was... It was excellent and I loved it so much that I was fortunate enough to be able to keep doing it. And then at the age of six or seven, yeah. I think we first came out here and I was yeah. lucky enough to get an agent. And after a couple of years of coming out for pilot season and stuff like that and still working, she said, if you guys really want to do it out here, you, you have to move. So we yeah. went, okay. Uh, and we moved and we've been here for seven years. Amazing. And everything has just been incredible since then. And it never in. gets boring. It really doesn't. We Everything's are always new. Because the studio I know, because it's great. Great. Cool. everything's progressing <laughs> so quickly now that everything's always new. There's nothing you don't get. Never a dull bored. moment. Exactly. Never a dull moment. And yeah. I'm lucky enough to have been in well known TV shows and I just finished a Disney Plus movie called Secret Society of Second World Royals. And it's just been an incredible experience and I'm very fortunate to be in this situation. And you were in Once Upon a Time as well. Yes, okay, I my was. My kids will die. Let's get a little picture before. Yes, I leave. <laughs> Once Upon a Time is Young Selena, Wicked Witch of the West. Fantastic. Um, I want to talk a little bit about since you've been here, what has happened with women in the business in the last, say, three years? Yeah. Well, that's interesting because you say the last three years, and that's obviously when I started. So I will say I knew nothing else. Mm -hmm. So coming in at this uh, level, and also not being a studio, as I'm an independent filmmaker. I think that's slightly different. So I've had a lot of support. I have some phenomenal male colleagues and friends who, and even the guy that runs this festival, you know, they, he said, I want to get you in, I want to watch a film, let's put it in, let's get you on the panel. Really supportive. And I, I have to say, I'm always commenting, and I'm probably getting backlash for even commenting like this, that I don't really find many women very supportive. So from a, from, not this isn't from a hashtag me too side of things, this is from a professional working environment, which is why I'm trying to show Isabella how things are done. Now she works with an amazing woman as well. So they are out there. She's got yeah. Cindy Cowan. She's phenomenal yeah, and very supportive, but it's not been the easiest of things to be part of. But as I said, because I'm only, I've only been in it for three years, I didn't know the alternative. Yeah, and I, from talking to people, I. I hear from people that that's changing, but are you, are you not feeling that? Uh, i put it this way, when I email or call or speak to someone and they don't respond, I'm kind of getting the idea that it's not changing. Uh, and I think as well it's a lot about competition. A lot of people feel that it's, it's oh, you're helping, I'm helping someone else, so they're now suddenly going to do better than me. It's like, no, it's good to support other people. Right. Even if you, they are other women, it's just good to support everyone because if you were in that situation, you want, you'd want you want to be supported as well. And, and we love mother-daughters. I mean, yeah. we're not, not excluding sons here, but <laughs> that, that concept of female empowerment, we've got another mother-daughter team that work with us. And that relationship is so important. Yeah, well. and, and so I just feel it's about nurturing that. And then as far as that whole kind of the Me Too aspect of things, you know, Isabella being an actress, you're in a different environment to me but we're still in the same space where you just have to monitor what you're doing and where you are you know but but I always say to Isabella I'd want you to do that in any industry mm -hmm. if you were in of the course. sports industry the financial industry they're all the same there's nonsense everywhere yeah mm -hmm. there is nonsense everywhere and we have to do it anyway yeah yeah what does support look like well I know I can uh, say I'll, I'll, I'll step in I'll help you out. Let's I'll light it on fire. Okay. Um, I think it's just, I think, more about... <laughs> That's right. It's just more about saying that I think it's so important, especially younger generations, to be supporting each other. Because I found, especially as an actress, that the competition is huge. Yeah. That it's... And the roles are few. Exactly, and the roles are few. But for me, I know that if my friends book something, it's because they were right for it and I wasn't. And yeah. there's nothing... That's not like... There's nothing I could have done about that. That's just what happens. And I think people forget that a lot of the time, that when someone's picked for something, there's a reason for it. It's not just someone went, oh, with their eyes closed, and you. <laughs> it's, it's based it's, on nothing. Exactly. It's, yeah. There's always a reason for something. So I think it's so important to just start supporting your fellow women, your fellow filmmakers, because everyone has gone through something, whether it be struggling to make a film 
or anything. And it's just about helping them because if you were in that situation, you'd want someone to help you as well. Of course. Now, are you making an effort to have gender balance on your sets? Oh, oh yes. yes. Big time. 50 50. By 2020. At least. That's no, right. At least. You're on board with that. Uh, for me, it's about diversity, it's about supporting women. But I will say, I don't therefore exclude men. No, no it's, it's saying the best person for the job, yes. but not excluding women. Well, it's the best person for the job and making sure I look at both versions first. So I actually, my DP is actually a guy, he, he, but he's been with me from the very beginning and he's incredibly supportive, but equally I'll have, uh, try and put other heads of departments as women. And in fact, we're shooting a TV pilot in two weeks and uh, there's a, a new DP that's coming on from that because she's in, based in LA. She's a she. I can't wait to watch it. She's a she. <laughs> yeah, so definitely. Now, is this a pilot that you've written? Yes, yes. It's called Across the Pond at the moment. Might change. Which is and where yeah. we thought each other were. That's <laughs> yeah, funny. Funny. yeah, no, I wrote it based on actually truth of us coming over. When we first came over, Isabella was 13, I was 33, and our best mutual friend was 23. So there were three generations coming over, and we knew nothing. Mm -hmm. And so the- That was the, very brave. It, it, or it stupid, could have been another word. <laughs> yeah. uh, but we've written this Spent remembering that, because it's so funny what we went through and mm -hmm. what we did. Yeah. I love it. And how yeah. you learn certain things. Oh, yes. Like what, for example? Well, oh, we don't, want to, we don't want to give away the jokes from the show as well. Well, no, so, we can give away uh, a couple of things. Okay, okay. Give us one. Say, give us a little taste. Say, we can say, let's things like um, the, well, I didn't know what a three-letter acronym was. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, for example, when people were asking, I had this big meeting and they wanted to pitch deck the Bible with the LOI and the, you know, the P&As. And I'd have to sit there and go, yeah, no, nod. And I'd nod very, you know, as I if I knew. That. Yeah. Um, and then, no, you can't Google it. I got home and I would try to find out what was going on. And then there was nobody I could ask because then I would look stupid. It was, it was, it was honestly. And then to write a budget, do you know what you do? You make it up. Yes. You make it up. Yeah. So that's what I had to do. I was like, I'm just going to put this all together and see what happens. How'd that go? Really well. <laughs> <laughs> People still believe me. But it's, I think as well, it's showing the pilots showing that, hey, you can do anything no matter where you come from and what you know. Exactly. Because especially in this industry, film school is great for knowledge, but then when you get onto a set, you're still going to start from the bottom of that department exactly. because it, right. you're, it's all about the experience you've had on actual sets. No one wants to hear you graduated from film school no, exactly. and they're going to hand you the it's helming like, oh, of the okay, film. okay, cool. Now you're going to still be an assistant. Yes. It like, helps welcome, to you're have the that. PA. Glad exactly. you have it your film degree. Like say, well, it helps oh. for yourself to have that knowledge, yeah. not so much everyone else. Well, and that's <laughs> what I'm saying. I actually, that's why I know what I know. Yeah. Because I had no ego about, I'll make your coffees. Even now, and I'm on any of my sets, if someone needs a coffee, I'm going to get them coffee. I don't yeah. care. You know, but that's how you learn everything. It's really important. I think that's also kind of English, actually. Oh, do you think? I was on set oh, for uh, an, a huge HBO movie, and the producer was slicing up and handing out cake on the set. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah. that would not have happened in America. Yeah, I think maybe you're right then. But bit. as well, yeah, because you're right. It's like when you're on set, the director can't push the button for playback on the thing. You can't it's touch like, anything. But it's right there. Yeah, so you have to go get the person to push the button for playback. Unions. Yeah, Unions. Exactly. Uh -huh. You have to only do your job. So I think you're right. It is. It's in England as well it's like anyone help help each other yes what advice do you have for women coming up behind you to come on my set <laughs> because every set I mentor every set I have someone that's new not experienced trying something different um, if for me, it's about finding someone that will support your vision and your dream. So if I have a 16 year old that says to me, I really want to be a director, I'm like, I'll help you, I'll support you. And I don't think you're too young to learn. Uh, that's, that's why mother-daughter is so imperative, I think. Because the other mother-daughter, actually the daughter is 19. Yeah. The, we were on a panel this morning and that daughter was 30 with that mother and they work together. And that's just wonderful. I think for me, Great. there's there's a couple things. It's like they're big statements. It's be brave, because in this industry, being brave is such a big part of it. Because it's like you have to make those jumps and make those steps and take those steps, because otherwise nothing's going to happen. It's about holding yourself accountable for things, yeah. so that they get done. 
um, support other people who are coming up with you because you never know where they're going to end up. They could be the next Steven Spielberg. Well, I'm not yeah. saying you can't be the next Steven Spielberg, but they could be. But and they're going to rise together. Exactly. Can you explain why that's really relevant with you at the moment as a, an assistant. No, because oh, yeah. you're making phone calls to these other assistants, and yeah. I'm like, do you realise in five years' time you're both not going to be assistants? You're right. going to have gone up to another level. Exactly. It's absolutely happens. Because yeah. you all grow at similar pacings, and so you it's like graduating. It's being in school. It's like you all go off in the same grade. You're yeah. all going to graduate at the same time. Time. And then you turn 40 and all your friends are running Hollywood. Exactly. It's weird. Exactly. That's why you got to support <laughs> Ooh, everyone. Really? Because, because you never know where they're going to end up. And you don't yeah. want it to come back and bite you. Um, and it's not saying, hey, when they're here, I'm going to ask for everything. It's about just saying, hey, it's really cool to know that person. We're like, oh, yeah, I was friends with them. We came up together. That's exactly right. It is. You're right. Wise words. Yes. Tell me about your latest feature film. Uh, the one that we shot or the one that we're going to shoot? Both. Oh, all right then. Let's start in the one that we shot called Maybe I'm Fine, which was a I love that title. wonderful <laughs> experience. What, you know why the title? Because it was her song, Maybe I'm Fine. Originally it was just, we just called it Road Trip and then she heard yeah. the song and went, oh, I like that as a title. Yeah. I was like, yeah, okay. That was great. Okay, what does that mean? Yeah, because... I mean, I'm making it up yeah, in my head, yeah. but... I think, for me anyway, when it came from the song, is is just like saying how you always kind of put on a brave face for people. It's like, no, I'm great. It's like, but are you though? So it's saying, well, maybe I'm okay. I <laughs> yeah. mean, I could be, but right now I'm not entirely sure. And it's also saying, it's like, oh, that's okay to not be sure. How yeah. you're Which is what your character feels most of the road yes. trip. So it's a road trip based from... Uh, LA up to San Francisco and she has to unfortunately father daughter road trip father daughter road trip go with her dad who is a little bit of a uh, what is he he's just like he's not a loser he's, he's, not he's a, struggling he's a struggling he's musician struggling. so struggling musician and struggling a little bit it. in life and in life struggling with everything he's just struggling and so yeah. she has to go on the road trip with him through various things happen along the way it's like the but, family weekend from summer camp yeah but and it he, was um and he breaks me out of summer camp yeah he does and he doesn't tell anybody that he's got her so but she thinks you know. that everyone knows but I'm not telling everybody everything. No, but isn't that, that's in the bio. Um, but I don't know. Oh. I don't want to tell everyone what's going on. Well, watch the movie. <laughs> I'm leaving that in, yeah. by the way. I know, you can. Um, but it's um, that we're best friends. It's perfect. Yeah. Um, like we finish each other's sentences. We do. Yeah. It's like in Frozen when they say finish each other's sandwiches. sandwiches. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> exactly. So it's a really fun feature with some great cast. And actually the cast I put in are just becoming bigger and bigger in what they do. So that was really good Fantastic. to kind of get ahead of it. supporting everyone. It does, supporting everyone. It's true because you didn't know. I didn't know. Um, and that is going to be released hopefully this summer. And then the one we are shooting in uh, December is a true story based on Isabella and her best friend who is 100 years old. So Isabella mm -hmm. wrote it. And Wait. Well, I did the arc and then she wrote scenes. Is this true? Yeah. Very Completely true so. story. My best friend was 100. She passed away last year in May. And I, Six years of friendship. Six years of friendship. And she was such a big part of my life. Massive influence on a lot of things. And she was just the best person. I always say I have an old soul and she had a very young soul. So she was like a 14 year old and I was like a 100 year old. So it always worked out That's between true. us. That's true. Yeah, so she was the and she lived here? Uh, yeah, she lived in Hermosa, a couple doors down from me. Well, actually, three doors down. Three doors which down. Which is probably what we're going to call the movie. Three doors down? Three doors yeah. down. So that ha that's how you met her? And that's how I met her, is we were walking one day and she saw Chai and invited me up and we just got to talking and then she'd tell me these phenomenal stories about her entire life. And Amazing. we just became best friends. And yeah, she was, she, I loved, I loved her and, a lot. And, and Chai is our dog. Because otherwise she might yes. think it was a cup of tea. Oh, that's Chai true. Right. Chai's the dog Chai who is, is dog. right here, by who the way. Who is right here. My you may have heard a couple of minutes ago. Maltese, who's a little bit not white today. Yeah. <laughs> she's supposed she's to be. She's out. a bit grey. So Millie loved Chai. Millie loved Isabella. Yes. And she would go and Chai loved all Millie. the time. And it was a case of uh, sometimes three hours, I would have to say, text or call Isabella because at 10 years old, she didn't have a phone. I would go around. Yeah. But when, as you got older, I would text and say, you need to come back. So just another bit of time. Just another hour. We played solitaire hour. together. We'd bet with pennies. It was great fun. Yeah, she taught her to Wonderful. gamble. She taught me to gamble. As you do. Yeah. Exactly. It was perfect. <laughs> but she, yeah, she was amazing. That's incredible. So the film is about this relationship? Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. You're shooting in December? Yeah, and we've got a wonderful actress to play, Terry Moore. She's going to play Millie uh, as a 91-year-old. It was very sweet, actually, because when we were talking to her and I told her about this role and I said, uh, you know, she's 100, Terry seriously turned to me and said, I think I can play 100. I was like, <laughs> she's a sweetheart. I met, I met her um, 
a couple of weeks ago for a meeting just to chat about the movie and she is just incredible and her stories as well and it's it's phenomenal to to speak to this generation because there's so many untold stories and that in itself should be a movie it's just the untold stories of this generation is old hollywood and what they have seen yeah and so the people why... they knew like she was best friends terry was best friends with Marilyn monroe like what yeah yeah but that's why <laughs> that's why we're telling this story because we really truly believe every story we tell has a purpose that you should talk to this older generation yes. and the younger generation is so quick not to uh, and I'm not dismissing all young people but we're all busy we all have our lives right, and you become you know, invisible and yes then yeah and things have moved on so quickly that you might think the older generation don't know how things work didn't didn't you used to show your phone to Millie Millie didn't understand how Siri worked she kept trying to figure out who was in my phone <laughs> uh, which was a fun thing she was like she goes honey if I was 10 years younger I'd have one of these things but I don't need it right now she just had her landline and that's all she had so she well needed. can you imagine it's only really happened in the last 20 years yeah like it really has happened so quickly that now I find people apologize for their age if they know what a fax machine was and that wasn't even that long ago no, it all happened so quickly up. right yeah right. but then it I used your so iPad fast. it was like such a weird time the early 2000s was like everything was switching over and Apple became yeah. rulers of the world yeah <laughs> yeah it's crazy it's, funny. it's gone so fast yeah. all right what is the big dream for the two of you Oh, okay, the two of us as a mother-daughter duo. Oh, you sound like you know the big oh, Well, the two of us as a mother-daughter duo or each of us individually? Let's bring do it both. all, bring okay, it all. Okay, because we can talk about mother-daughter together. Well, I you do your own, then, and then I'll give me time <laughs> to think on about to my own. Well, you sounded like the you knew. Well, no, I just wanted to confirm what answer I was thinking of. So, um, okay, so the big dream for me, I think, I say this to people because I do, I do get asked this question a lot, especially being a young actress. It's... My dream, no matter what, is that I'm going to be in the film industry, no matter what it is. And I'm being, I'm fortunate enough to have had the opportunities to try lots of different roles. So I'm able to have a well-rounded experience and I'm able to make uh, an informed decision to go, oh, this is what I really enjoy and really focus on certain things. So I know no matter what, I'm going to be in the film industry. But I think it's about, it sounds so like cheesy but being happy to be honest <laughs> oh, I, just, I just I just want to I just want to be happy and success to me as well successful success to me is being happy doing what you love and being able to support yourself and it, it could be financially it could be emotionally but being able to support yourself that's yeah. what success is to me so being successful and being happy those are the two big things for me and I know it'll be in the film industry just because that's what I love but whatever that may be that's that's my dream Wonderful. I like it. I like it. I kind <laughs> can't of feel steal like I'm my dream. Steal it. Are you just going to take it? <laughs> I am. I'm going to steal your dream. Um, no, I think I think you're definitely right with being happy, mm -hmm. and you can cover all those. That I want to be happy, healthy. Because people forget that as well. Uh, yes, they do. <laughs> but I think if we're going to take it to from a career point of view, which yours did cover that as well. Yeah. But I I know that I want to make a difference in the world through telling stories. So I love the fact that everything I've come up with or people I'm working with are along that same page as well. So therefore nothing stops me from making that happen. And it's about telling those stories that will allow me to make that change in the world. And actually that kind of comes over to Mother Daughter. So directing to me is just what I do. There's nothing. I couldn't, I can't wake up and think that I couldn't make a film. That would be devastating mm -hmm. to me. So as long as I'm directing and creating and making a change, I think I'm good. And for us to have that as people recognize yeah. mother daughter as that. Yeah, and I think our, what's the word? Uh, not our tagline, but our Mandate. Thing, yeah, I think so. Our mandate for mother daughter entertainment is making content that matters. And I think continually, continuously <laughs> making content that matters is really important to both of us because it's, it's talking about the serious subjects like Unseen, but it's also talking about just normal things about teenage life and adult life. And that's just everything and making sure that it's important and not just pointless, especially nowadays. Especially nowadays. Especially How many nowadays. projects are you working on at once? A lot. Seven. Is it, is it seven? I think so. We've got a slate of six, the TV show. Uh, that's all done and ready to go. But then there's always new stuff in the works yeah. as well. That's just like confirmed things yes. that we have on our slate. Yeah. Yeah. So are you guys just driving around town and go, wait a minute, I have an idea. And then oh, yeah, you figure it out on books. the drive home. We have our books <laughs> that have our ideas in them. Yeah, I mean, I've got, in fact, where is it? Oh, I don't know. I've where got it here. It's okay, here. good. Uh, my, <laughs> my book that I go around with and I write, I handwrite everything. So I she put does. it all in there with ideas. I'm the one with Google Calendar and then she's there with her file of acts. Yeah. What am I doing tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, it is. It's ideas after ideas after ideas. And 
that inspiration it's, it's a drug I'm, a, I'm totally addicted to it because as well it's like you can keep creating ideas as much as you want like they're, they're free so just make it because they'll always lead to other things and you can combine ideas and create crazy stuff and nowadays it's so hard to be original that when the more you're creating ideas the more likely you're able to find something new but yeah. as well it's saying hey I love this idea let's follow through with it and it's not just about creating the idea it's about really making it to the end and the release part of it so then do you structure your time I'm thinking because I assume you're yeah. still living together yes, yes. on a boat on a boat what yes we're on a boat yeah. we live on a boat oh my yeah. god this is getting better and better <laughs> yeah so because I imagine you have tons of creative conversations do you ever stop and say now we have to have a business conversation and then I imagine sometimes you stop and say could we just not right now and just watch television it kind of combines into everything it we does. can be watching a movie and go oh my gosh so I have this idea for something like it'll literally <laughs> just happen and because we love it so much it doesn't it's not like we find that like a barrier or a boundary everything just kind of blends into one for us because film is so much our life and our life is film and we love it so much that everything's just incorporated into one it just is who you are and yeah. the thing is so the essence. language the language that we speak is the same yeah. for whether it's life film work home everything, everything everything coincides it's all connected yeah so Absolutely. so you're very integrated that's it's the funny word it's integration I, I did go on a date the other day that someone said to me um if we if we go out no actually no we weren't on a date he said if we go on a date or if we started to date each other i don't want to talk, to talk about work and i thought oh you are so not right for me because that's all I want to talk about but not yeah. because I'm sitting here going I work in an office and not because you don't have other things to talk about no. it's just all incorporated yeah. the exactly. experiences we have are because of our work right yeah. and then our work will be because of those experiences everything's just together and it's not to say that we don't have the to use air quotes because no one can see me the personal work life boundaries it's all just one and we're okay with that it's yeah. not like we're saying no work and life separate work is life life is work that's just yeah. how it is for us. and you know what it's and it's not that. work it's it's just it's our passion so but you that's do. why i say i don't work a single day in my yeah. life i i got up the other morning i was laughing at myself 8 a.m nobody's making me leave the house at that time yeah and i don't get home last night until half past midnight i've been working i didn't have a single penny and meetings after meetings, writings, working with my assistant, going over everything. And I thought, I'm, I'm the one that made me do this. There's nobody here making me yeah. do this. Mm -hmm. But I don't even question it. Of this course. is a Saturday. Straight away, film festival panel. Let's do a screening. Let's do a podcast. I'm going to a meeting. There's an event. Well, it doesn't even come into my head that I wouldn't do that. Of course, you're living your purpose. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's it. It's wonderful. How can mm. people find you? Uh, everywhere. At, I'll do you, at Isabella underscore B underscore T or at Elizabeth underscore B underscore T. And, and Chai has her own page, Chai the Russian Spy. With underscores instead of spaces. And, and also on our mother daughter website, mother and daughter com. Uh, our websites are just our names. No, Isabella. no, we're, there. we're not going to have those. Anymore. No, no, I, no. We scratch need to talk that. about that. Okay, scratch, <laughs> that. scratch that. Well, yeah. well, no. Have a look at them while they're there. Yeah, quick. You know, it's our names with dot com. But also, um, like Facebook is like Elizabeth Blake Thomas or something, isn't it? I think it's just our names. But if you Google us, we show up. Yeah, we'll everywhere. find you, and I'll link to all your things on my website. Instagram. Yay. We use. I think we use Instagram most. Well, I know yeah. I use Instagram the most. It's Isabella underscore B for Blake underscore T for Thomas. Okay. Oh, it's spelled I-S-A-B-E-L-L-A, -L -L -A, just because people spell it differently. I-S-E? I-S-A-B-E-L-L-A. Oh, I-S-A-B-E. Okay. I've had Zs, I've had Ts thrown in there. It's know. all wrong. Exactly. Uh, what did I not ask you about that I should have asked you about? Uh, what, what, what is a want? Let's do a want because we're all women. All right. Okay, I would like somebody to fund me. <laughs> no, I'd like someone to <laughs> want to fund um, a couple of the mother-daughter projects. I've got a very exciting uh, feature that I'm going to be submitting for the Oscars for the Academy next year. And uh, I would like to make that. It's an LGBTQIA. Did I get that right? You did. Or if you want to, you can say LGBTQ+. Oh, okay. That's a beautiful feature. <laughs> okay. What's the IA? I don't know. Intersexual, asexual. Thank you. Well done. And, um, we must keep up. <laughs> yes. And so so that's really, and, and just meeting people and making friends. So I suppose if anybody wants to get to know us, have a meeting, find us, we are open to that. Fantastic. Yes. Thank you. You covered all the bases, I think, for when it comes to what we want. I think so. Yeah. You Did we do everything. it? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You two are adorable. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> we finish each other's 
Sandwiches. Yes, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> You've been listening to The Other 50%, A History of Hollywood. I'm Julie Harris-Walker. I'd like to thank Elizabeth Blake-Thomas and Isabella Blake-Thomas for sharing their stories. And special thanks to Jay Rowey, Danny Rosner, and Allison McQuaid for the music. Please find us on your favorite podcast provider and leave a review. And of course, on our website, theother50percent.com, all spelled out for added features, bios of our guests, and the merch. You can also follow us on all the social media platforms. And also go subscribe at catchabreakpodcast.com. Thanks for listening. See you next time.